Welcome to Crawford Clark Close-Up's First Christmas. Our decorations are up and we're ready to bring you five classic Christmas reviews in the run-up to Christmas 2018. We're starting off controversially as ever. If the 1990s was the decade of the blockbuster, the 80s was the decade of action. From Rambo to Robocop, audiences reveled in the OTT action and violence of the decade. So on its release in 1988, why exactly would Die Hard prove as popular as it did? Was it the fact that the film is set at Christmas time and immediately raised our spirits? Was it seeing unlikely action hero Bruce Willis, who previously committed himself to romantic dramas and Miami Vice, star in a major leading role with killer catchphrases? Was it the late great Alan Rickman portraying one of the screen's most memorable baddies? Or really, was it a combination of all three and more? From the outset, Willis's McLean is such a relatable protagonist. Officer of the NYPD, John McLean is visiting his wife Holly over Christmas in Los Angeles, and after humorous byplay between he and his cab driver, winds up at Nakatomi Plaza, where the action and events of the next two hours will play out. The late Alan Rickman revelled in playing the screen villain, and they don't come much finer than the slimy Hans Gruber with the velvet voice, seemingly in control of the building and its occupants, until McLean intrudes on the action. The film is memorable not only for its thrilling action set pieces, but for the sparkling dialogue. We feel like we're buddying up with Willis's McLean throughout as he manoeuvres himself from one level of the skyscraper to another, trying to outwit Rickman's Gruber and his cronies. The supporting cast appears like a who's been in the James Bond series in the 1980s, with Andreas Wisniewski playing Tony, one of Gruber's men, who starred opposite Timothy Dalton's James Bond in The Living Daylights a year earlier, and Robert Darvey and Grandel Bush portraying bumbling FBI agents is a far cry from their respective roles in Licence to Kill in 1989. Michael Kamen provides an engaging score for the film, utilising Ode to Joy to brilliant effect throughout, and keeps the audience on their toes, wondering how McLean and the largely incompetent LAPD are going to get the situation under control. The biggest question on most reviewers' lips is, is Die Hard actually a Christmas film? Whilst there are clear arguments for and against, in this reviewer's mind it's a staple of our Christmas viewing. The film is set on Christmas Eve, there's interwoven references throughout to the holiday season, and the end credits even blast out a cathartic, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow, surely reminding us that Christmas films don't all have to be fluffy and innocent. They can be wrought with danger and thrilling action too. Based on Roderick Thorpe's novel Nothing Lasts Forever, it's a testament to the success of Die Hard that the film is not only celebrating 30 years this year as one of the greatest action films of all time, but it also started a run of currently five films in the franchise, each admittedly getting steadily worse than the last, but it's an impressive feat nevertheless. When Rickman and Willis interact on screen, they bounce off each other brilliantly. The film is edited superbly, thrilling us and leaving us on the edge of our seats in anticipation throughout, and the dialogue is sublime. From Rickman trying to imitate McLean's yippee ki motherfucker, to having the antagonist of the film mutter, Now I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. Whatever your opinion on the film, Die Hard is pure popcorn entertainment, and is a surefire winner of most unlikely but entertaining Christmas movie. And of course, the villain has one of the most perfect deaths. Happy 30th anniversary, Die Hard. From Crawford Clark Close Up, it is... So, the Christmas season is upon us, and we've still got four more festive treats for you guys under our tree. Don't forget, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter, and you can email us, CrawfordClarkCloseUp at gmail.com, with suggestions for reviews to come in 2019. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this review, and stay tuned, because up next in our Countdown to Christmas, we'll be delving into the wonderful mind of the late writer and producer John Hughes with our reviews of the classics Home Alone and Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. Until next time, thanks for watching, and that's a wrap.